What's going on guys, my name is Matt and today we're going to be checking out a CPU and motherboard combo that costs just $25. It's readily available and combined with some other budget parts it can give you a decent experience in a lot of games. But is it worth it? That's the question that I'm going to be trying to answer in today's video. So what is the CPU and motherboard in question? Well, let's start with the CPU. When looking at ultra budget PC gaming for a few years now, we've looked at second gen Intel CPUs. For a while, the focus was on stuff like the i5-2400 and other core i CPUs. But as of late, people have begun to realize that the E3 Xeons of this era are going for much less money than their mainstream counterparts, but still work in regular consumer motherboards. Which brings us to the introduction of the first half of this super cheap combo, which is the Intel Xeon E3-1230. This is a 4-core 8-thread CPU running on the legendary Sandy Bridge architecture. It only turbos up to about 3.6GHz, but it still works surprisingly well in esports titles, especially considering the fact it was released well over 10 years ago. This Xeon E3-1230 is essentially an i7-2600, with the downside being no integrated graphics, and the upside being it goes for literally half the price. For some people, the lack of integrated graphics may be a big deal, but if you're building a gaming system, then you're probably going to be using a dedicated graphics card which negates the need for those integrated graphics. These E3-1230s are going for as low as $13 with free shipping right now on eBay which is a great deal in my opinion. So I gave you a little intro on the $13 CPU in this combo, meaning now it's time to talk about the motherboard. If you know anything about used PC hardware and pricing, generally as time goes on the price of older CPUs goes down, while the price of compatible motherboards generally goes up. This is because motherboards generally fail at a much faster rate than CPUs, making the supply drop and inversely making the price go up. With that being said, cheap motherboards from this era are surprisingly easy to get a hold of. I'm going to be showing two different options, but the board I went with for this $25 combo is the Dell M5 DCD, which came out of an Optiplex 390 mid-tower pre-built. These technically don't support Xeon CPUs, but as you'll see in this video, first gen E3 Xeons work perfectly fine in it. At $11, this board is incredibly cheap, but it does come with a few big drawbacks, which I'll talk about in a minute. Compared to a lot of motherboards from pre-builds, this one is pretty standard. It uses standard 4 and 24 pin power connectors. It has three standard fan connectors, good room for PCIe expansion, and a standard micro ATX layout. The biggest downside of this board, in my opinion, is the two DIMM slots. This means you're going to need to use two 8GB sticks of DDR3 if you want 16GB of RAM, which is going to cost a fair bit more than buying four 4GB sticks for a board with four DIMM slots. Beyond this, this board only has USB 2 support, which you may be able to fix with a USB 3 PCIe card, and the front panel connectors on this board are non-standard, meaning you may have to search around the internet for a diagram or play around until you get the cable orientation and placement correct. Another motherboard option is going for something like this Dell J3 C2F, which does have four DIMM slots, but the fan connectors are non-standard, meaning you will either need to buy a compatible cooler and fan, or buy fan adapters which can add an extra $10 in cost. Combined at the time of making this video, you can pick up a Xeon E3-1230 CPU, an Optiplex 390 motherboard for only $24 total which is incredibly cheap for a CPU motherboard combo, but how does it perform and what other parts would I pair with these because a gaming PC is a lot more than just a CPU and motherboard. Well, let's imagine I was going the ultra budget route. To add on to this combo, I would grab a 2x4GB kit of DDR3 RAM for about $10, obviously making sure I was getting regular DDR3 and not server memory. To cool this CPU, I would grab the absolute cheapest compatible cooler I could find, for example this old Intel stock cooler which I picked up for only $5, and I'd throw in one of these $17 256GB SSDs to get me up and running. The silicon power drive is nothing fancy, but it will get the job done. The case, power supply, and GPU are the items I would spend the most time hunting down deals for. For today's video, I'm going to be using this 450 watt EVGA B stock power supply that I picked up for only $15 on a midweek madness sale. It's cheap, it'll power the system fine, and it probably won't blow up. For a case, I'd look locally and grab the cheapest one that'll hold all the parts. I just use this old case I had lying around, but again, deal hunting locally is the best way to go for a cheap case. I would personally spend only $10 to $20 on a case for a build like this. 
Then for the GPU, I would try and spend under $50. Something like this GTX 960, which I got for only 45 bucks would be a good fit, but you could even go up to something like an RX 470, which are getting pretty cheap right now. Going for as low as $65 buy it now on eBay, and I expect the price to drop even further as time goes on. So with the $25 CPU motherboard combo, another 5 bucks for a cooler, 30-ish bucks for RAM and storage, 45 for a GPU, and another 30 for a cheap case and power supply, you can see that putting a budget gaming PC together with this combo could be done for around 120 to 150 bucks depending on how you spec it and what kind of deals you can get. But before I answer the question of if it's worth it or not, I need to test it in some games. I'm testing mostly esports titles in today's video as that's what I think a machine like this probably will be used for with a few other games sprinkled in, so without further ado, here are the gaming benchmarks. As you can see from the benchmarks, this little $25 CPU motherboard combo, even when paired with only 8GB of RAM and a GTX 960 2GB, performs surprisingly well. Stuff like Valorant and Overwatch 2 work really well, and a lot of older slash less demanding AAA games are able to average nearly 60fps at 1080p low settings. This definitely doesn't come anywhere close to even budget modern hardware, but for an ultra cheap gaming rig, I think this combo works out fine and is a great deal. I actually ended up using an Optiplex cooler for the final test system because one of the mounting pegs wasn't wanting to lock fully into place on the Intel stock cooler. With all that being said, I'm interested to hear what you guys think of this combo in the comments below. Is this something you'd consider for an ultra cheap budget system or do you think the drawbacks make it not worth it? So yeah guys, I think this wraps this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. And as always, this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.